Hi there, everyone. Welcome back to 3 News Now. I'm Stephanie Haney. Today is Monday, September 6th. Thanks for being here for the top stories from WKYC.com and our WKYC app. Thanks for joining me after some time away. Happy to be back here with you, bringing you the top stories from WKYC.com. We do start today with a serious story. We've got a developing story out of Akron. Akron Fire Department has let us know that they are investigating the cause of what appears to be a house collapse in the area. Akron Fire told 3 News that there is one person who has been injured as a result of what happened. They said that a caller called in and said they heard the sound of what they thought was an explosion. That's what the caller referred to it as and then saw flames coming from underneath the home. And then when Akron Fire responded to the call and they got there that the house had collapsed and that a neighbor was able to pull the person who lived there out of the rubble. Now this happened on Edwood Avenue near the intersection of Wilbeth and Manchester Roads, if you're familiar with that area. And the victim, we don't know who they are yet, but we do know that they did suffer burn injuries and were taken to a local hospital. Their condition is not known at this time, but again, this is a developing story. 3 News is on the scene. Aramani Abraham will be have more on that throughout the day, updating that story on WKYC.com and also in our broadcasts today. Again, check with 3 News for updates. Now we do have an update on Keith Urban's tour manager. Unfortunately, we now know that he has died after falling from the stage at the Bash on the Bay in Putin Bay. He's been the longtime tour production manager for him. His name was Rondi Baja Fletcher. He was 72 years old. He died on August 27th. He had fallen the previous day during Keith Urban's appearance at the Bash on the Bay on the Lake Erie Island of Putin Bay. Now, Fletcher became Urban's tour manager in 2011. He worked for decades for top country music stars. Keith Urban told Billboard magazine that Fletcher had an orbit of light and was much beloved. He received the Country Music Association's first Touring Lifetime Achievement Award in 2017. We are thinking of his family and everyone in his world today. Now, if you've gotten a notification that First Energy wants you to change your account password, now we know not why, and we've gotten lots of these notifications recently, right? Well, this one's coming from First Energy, so you're going to have to change that password after a number of unauthorized logins were detected. They're saying that there was suspicious activity involving numerous unauthorized attempts to log into customer accounts. The company says most of those attempts were not successful, but a number of them were successful, so now they are making everyone change their password. Here's a statement from First Energy. Out of an abundance of caution, we have disabled all online account access and are requiring our customers to reset their passwords to access their First Energy My Account. The company says you won't be able to access your account until the password update process has been completed. So here's what you're going to have to do if you need to reset that account. If you are a First Energy customer, you've got to enter your username and your email address that's associated with your online profile. Then you'll be sent a link and then you'll be able to complete that password update process. Now, First Energy says it is not aware of any customer information being misused, even with those successful login attempts. But again, out of an abundance of caution, that's what they're making sure that customers must do. Now, we just received the latest COVID-19 numbers, even though it is a holiday. We did get an update from the Ohio Department of Health. Today, there were 3,944 new reported COVID-19 cases. Now, throughout the weekend, the numbers were very high. Let's go back to Friday. Friday, 6,179 new COVID cases. Saturday, 6,369 new COVID cases. Sunday, 5,561 new COVID-19 cases. And that brings us to today, Monday, 3,944 new COVID-19 cases. Right now, there are 2,933 people who are currently in the hospital being treated for COVID-19. Out of those people, 819 of them are being treated in an intensive care unit. We are now learning that Tom Brady tested positive for COVID-19 after that Tampa Bay Buccaneers Super Bowl boat parade. He said it was shortly after that that he tested positive for COVID. And he says even though the Tampa Bay Buccaneers are now fully vaccinated, according to the team, he believes that COVID will still be a large challenge this year. This is according to ESPN. He says he thinks it's actually going to play more of a factor this year than it did last year because of the way that they're doing things now. He says what the stadium is going to look like and what the travel is going to look like and the people in the building and the fans. He said this to the Tampa Bay Times. 
He says, it's not like last year, although we're getting tested like last year. It's going to be, I definitely think guys are going to be out at different points, and we've just got to deal with it. There are already players, by the way, that have been placed on the reserve COVID-19 list. That includes offensive lineman Nick Leverett and Earl Watford. Now, this list is meant for players who test positive or who've had close contact with someone who did. But remember, those NFL protocols are different for vaccinated versus unvaccinated players. If you are vaccinated, you don't necessarily have to quarantine or be on that list for the same amount of time. So we've got more details on that on WKYC.com. Something else we have more details about on WKYC.com is this year's Velisano Cleveland Clinic Cancer Research Fundraiser. That's the topic of my Three Things to Know podcast this week. I talked with Nicole Peters. She is the executive director for Velisano at the Cleveland Clinic. She gave me the rundown on everything to expect this year. The big bike race is Saturday, September 11th, by the way. That's sort of the culminating event. This is a year-long fundraiser, in case you're not familiar, meant to raise money for cancer research around the world and, and Cleveland Clinic has been incredibly successful with this. Now there is still time to get involved. So if you want to get involved, check out the three things to know podcast. You can find that at WKYC.com slash three things to know. You can find it on every podcast platform. It's on our WKYC YouTube page as well. And if you're interested, we have 34 people at Team WKYC riding in the bike Velisano this year. People riding in all of the different categories. You can ride 10 miles, you can ride 25 miles, 50, 100 miles. Everyone's raising money. You can donate if you'd like to the Team WKYC fundraising page. I have a fundraising page. I will be riding on Saturday morning. Just the 10 mile ride though, which luckily for me is the latest start time, which I am very thankful for because not a morning person. I think you guys know that by now. <laughs> Definitely not a morning person. So I will be there. It would be wonderful to see people out there supporting Velisano. It's kicking off downtown. The finish line is downtown. There's breakfast, there's drinks. It's a whole thing. So anyway, listen to the podcast, Three Things to Know with Stephanie Haney. And if you are so inclined, you can donate. If you'd like to donate to my personal fundraising collection, it's give.velisano dot org slash stephanie haney again that's give dot velisano dot org slash stephanie haney anything appreciated what is also appreciated is the tribes fran mill reyes and his home run streak he's been hitting a lot of home runs and he is crediting it to two scoops of vanilla ice cream. That's what he said after hitting a home run over the infamous Green Monster at Fenway Park that was on Sunday against the Boston Red Sox. And he said he also did it the day before. He said he had some ice cream before he hit a home run the day before. So on Sunday he said, I need some more vanilla ice cream. I went and got two scoops. Voila, he said, he hit another home run. Pitcher Tristan McKenzie tweeted the video of him talking about it during the game he was talking with broadcasters and the broadcasters were laughing about it and by the way the tribe went on to beat the red sox 11 to 5 that day now reyes has hit 26 home runs so far this season six in the last 30 games and it's the 19th straight game that the tribe has had a home run this season that is uh tying the team's record from may of 2000 so it would be wonderful to see that record be broken, wouldn't it? Right now, the Tribe is in second place in the American League Central Division with 68 wins. They are 11 games behind the Chicago White Sox and three games ahead of the Detroit Tigers. Speaking of being behind and ahead, do you brush your teeth before or after breakfast? This is a topic of conversation right now on TikTok. There's a video that everybody's watching talking about when you brush your teeth. This all stemmed from this UK dentist, Anna Peterson, who said that you should not brush your teeth after breakfast. You should always do it before breakfast. She says that's because after breakfast, brushing the acid into the tooth is what you're doing and it wears away the enamel and brushing before breakfast protects your teeth from anything that you eat. So our Verify team took a look at this and they talked with dental hygienist Aubrey Taylor from Partners in Dental in Kentwood and the American Dental Association and they agree. Here's why. The pH in your mouth changes when you eat. Bacteria develops to break down the food, and when you brush, you're spreading around that bacteria on your teeth. This is an absolutely wild concept. My mind is absolutely blown about this. And that bacteria can damage your enamel. The American Dental Association says that it's best to wait at least an hour after you finish eating to brush your teeth. Taylor says a half hour is probably long enough. Now for me, I do brush my teeth first thing when I wake up. I also brush them right before bed, but first thing when I wake up, I brush my teeth, but I also don't eat breakfast 
right away. So if I was gonna wait until after breakfast, that would be a while and my mouth would just feel gross. So that's why I've been doing it apparently right on accident all this time. Uh, I would love to know, when are you brushing your teeth? Let me know, underscore Stephanie Haney. You can contact me on Twitter and uh, Instagram to let me know what you think about that. And today, by the way, is the end of an era. If you're not out at Cedar Point, you're missing out on the Wicked Twister because the Wicked Twister roller coaster closes today. Today is the last day to ride it. People who are riding it today are getting a free last launch button. They've also got souvenir t-shirts at Cedar Point today, bidding farewell to the roller coaster. Now we have tried to find out why the Wicked Twister roller coaster is closing. We don't know. Cedar Point won't say anything more than they are working on other things for the park. So we're all just waiting with bated breath at this point. They do say that the Wicked Twister has given more than 16 million rides since it debuted in 2002. So it had a good run. Something else that's had a good run. One more thing to let you know before we go here. The Yankee Peddler Festival is coming back to Canal Fulton. This will be its 48th year. I used to go to this all the time with my mom and my brothers and my grandparents. So much fun. If you want to go, they say you'll be stepping back in time 200 years and visiting Pioneer America. This is at Clay's Park Resort in Canal Fulton. This year, there will be more than 150 artists and crafters with colonial food cooked over wood fires, open fires, all day music, demonstrations of what it's like to live on the frontier. And there will also be a town crier, which I absolutely love, updating people about what's going on at the fairgrounds throughout the day. All kinds of hands-on opportunities. You can get in there, you can do some crafting, you can make some things from nature. Very cool stuff. It's this weekend. It's the 11th and 12th. It's also next weekend. It's the 18th and 19th and the weekend after that, the 25th and the 26th. So Saturday and Sunday for the next three weekends. That's from 10.30 to 5.30. The prices range depending on your age. Adults 12 to 59 years old are $10. It's a little less for the seniors. 16 up, $9. Children ages 6 to 11 is $3. And if you're five or younger, you get in for free. And that is the deal with Yankee Peddler. That's it for your three news now update today for Monday, September 6th. Thank you so much for being back with me again. So happy to be back here after some refreshing time away with you here talking about the top stories on WKYC.com and our WKYC app. Make sure you follow us on social media if you're not doing that. You can follow us on Twitter at WKYC and on Instagram at WKYC3. And you can find me both of those places at underscore Stephanie Haney. Everybody have a great day. Enjoy your Labor Day. Celebrate those American laborers and workers and the unofficial end of summer. And I will see you back here tomorrow with more 3 News Now.